Kiteli, Rakuke, Gasunta, Lima, Baka, Santa, Lea, that they feel us, oh God, because we are completing you. <laughs> Whatever might be missing in our life, <laughs> spiritually, physically, financially, materially, anything missing in our life, Lord, feel us afresh. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. I thought somebody would say a better. Amen. Precious Father, we don't want to say thank you. Faithful God, we reference your holy name. For you are not some God. You are a mighty God. You are a powerful God. You are our help at all times. Lord, I said our worship in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O God, for what you did in our midst in the morning. Thank you for what you have done in the past digging days. Thank you for what you are set to do tonight. Thank you for taking us out safely and bringing up us safely. Thank you for not allowing the roads to consume us. Thank you for not allowing the evil to befall us. Lord, thank you for the vessels you'll be using, O oh God, that they set our thanks in Jesus' name. Gracious Father, all we ask tonight, O oh God, Father, concerning your church, Lord, send revival again. Lord, send revival again. We use the Nigerian church as a point of contact. Send revival again. We use the ridiculous of God as a point of contact. Lord, send your revival. We use it of life as a point of contact. Lord, send revival. Lord, you will not only send revival, you will make us agents of revival. Lord, you will use us for your revival. And we pray for our dear nation, Nigeria. Mighty and everlasting Father. In your mercy, restore the glory of this nation. Put an end to all the evil happening in our nation in the name of Jesus. And that we pray for ourselves tonight. Lord, because we are complete in you. Whatever might be missing in our life, spiritually, physically, financially, materially, Lord, fill us up in the name of Jesus. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your glories. And tonight, my Father, my God, grant us understanding heart. Daddy, let your work come forth tonight undiluted. Let your work come forth tonight unpolluted. Lord, let your children not hear what the teacher want them to hear, but what you want us to hear. Daddy, speak to us in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I ask you use me to your glory tonight. Thank you, mighty Father. At the end of tonight, oh God, may we not return the same way we came. For we pray in Jesus' name. And the blood of God say it better and it louder. Put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And make a joyfulness unto the Lord. I see you are not excited tonight. Stand on your feet, make a joyfulness unto the Lord. Whatever might be happening, the Lord is on your side. Amen. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Put your hand one more time. And let's be seated as kings and queens. Praise the Lord. You are welcome back after some weeks of break uh, from digging the proper. Not that we've not been meeting, but that uh, we observe the 14 days fasting and prayer program uh, that made us rather than study during those periods, we are just firing prayer arrows. I hope your prayer arrows hit the right target. No, I'm just asking that I hope. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Your testimony shall be heard. Amen. Only one person said amen. amen. My testimony shall be heard. Amen. Thank you for saying amen for me. Uh, your testimony shall be heard. So, the last time we met on this series, we took the patatine of Nehemiah a builder. Nehemiah a builder. And tonight, we are continuing with the series as we look at part 14 of Nehemiah a builder. Our last test ended Nehemiah chapter 7, the last verses. Tonight, we want to look at Nehemiah chapter 8. 
I will be reading the first five verses. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, or the eighth chapter, the first five verses. Shall we stand as I read? Shall we stand as I read? You are wondering, is this another revelation? And I'll tell you, yes, it is. Hence what? When we come to dig it deep and want to read the Bible passage, we shall be standing. And you will see it as I read. Praise the Lord. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they speak unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses. To do all. Which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women. And all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Which month are we? And he read there in before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. He was reading from where? Until midday. I hope that day we come. That will be reading from morning till midday. Praise the Lord. Before the men and the women. And those that could understand and the years of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. May your year be attentive tonight. And Ezra described stood upon a pulpit of wood. This one is of uh, concrete. Praise the Lord. Which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Metitia and Sheman and Anaya and Uraja and Hilkia and Masia and his right on his right hand and on his left hand Bedaya and Misha and Maka and Hashum and Hashba Dona Zechariah and Meshulam and Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people for it was above all the people and when he opened it all the people stood so what are you doing I am standing what are you doing I am may the Lord bless the reading of his word in our heart in the name of Jesus so it is in the bible that when the book was to be opened what happened to the people they stood up so you can please be seated and the Lord bless you really good. Have you learned anything today? Eh? So these are the days of Ezra. Praise the Lord. When, when the word is to be read, the congregation did what? They stood up. You have learned something. Even on Sunday I come here now and I say the Bible reading for today. Can we all please stand? We say, which, which did that one start? Where is here for Bible? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> But you, you have seen it in the Bible that when they were to open the book to read, what happened? The people did what? They stood up. Were they standing for the man of God? No. They were standing in honor of God. For even God himself honored his word more than his name. Did you get anything I said? So when you stand for the word to be read, what are you doing? You are honoring and God will honor you. For he says, Though that honor me, I will. And though that despise me, shall be likely esteem. Beloved, the last time we met in our study, just like I was saying earlier in this series, we discovered that giving to God's work is highly rewarding. Giving to what? Is what? So, because we look at how the people gave to the work and we look at the reward which is both here on earth and in heaven to come and that's why I can always encourage anybody sir, ma give towards the work of God 
particularly the ongoing project, is an avenue for you to be blessed. Take it or leave it. And you can never, you can never overgive or outgive. Praise the Lord. But one thing is this. While we're building the physical structure, the people ought to be built. And there is no better time to build the people than this dispensation. Because in this dispensation, the emphasis is on the individual believer. Because it is the individual believer that is the church. It is the individual believer that is the temple of God. Praise the Lord. And so, similar to the way the physical temple is built, the people ought to be built. We need to be built spiritually. We need to be built in the knowledge of God. And to be built in the knowledge of God is to be built in the word of God. And that's the reason why God swore, tells us, that we should not forsake the assembly of what? Of brethren. We saw here that the congregation gathered both men and women. Both what? COVID have helped now that men and women are getting unnecessarily used to sitting at home and saying whatever they will have gotten when they go to the assembly of brethren, they can as well get it online. Praise the Lord. So there is a lot of remote and online worshipping. But the truth is that the experience is not the same. The experience is not what? It's not the same. It's not the same. And it did not start today. In the days of Nehemiah, the people still gather together just as we are gathering tonight. Just as we gather always to learn, to worship. And so, tonight, we're looking at just one outline. We see ladders. One outline. And it has what? Six steps, like a ladder. And the outline says the gathering together of God's people. When God's people gather together, why should they gather? When God's people gather together, what are the consequences? When God's people gather together, what are the benefits? When God's people gather together, what should they be doing? First and foremost, I want us to know that whenever we are gathering, is a way of building ourselves. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron. Anytime we are gathering in the presence of the Lord, as we sing the song, we are gathering together unto the unto the Lord. We are gathering together unto the unto the Lord. Unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee. Those at home watching online and can't sing that song. Father, are they here? Jesus, Holy God, we are here for. So it's not the same thing. We gather so as to be built in his kingdom. So, 
we do not just gather but even God himself what did I say God himself desire that his people gather together God almighty desire that what I can't hear you sir God desire that his people do what gather together gather together for spiritual renewal and revival for spiritual what renewal and revival renewal and revival can only come in his presence you are going to discover our team for the month complete in him it takes renewal of our mind to become what we are in him it has to do with our mindset in him and that's why some of the things we may be sharing when we're talking about completing him could be strange to a lot of people some people be asking the question how is it possible like on Sunday when we are saying the God in you you'll be shocked to discover that there are many that may not agree with that message but how can he be saying we are God God from we are now you mean me I be God how can be me be, be, be God I not be God though. praise the Lord but it takes renewal of mind to have an understanding of God and concerning who we are so renewal and revival come from God and they are mediated through the following that renewal and revival are mediated through number one God's word God's word that's why there is hardly any time we gather together that we don't go into the word of God because it is the word of God that sanctify us he says sanctify them with thy word thy word is what? it's truth it is the word that reveal God to us it is the word of God that inspired us the word of God is an antidote from depression many times we are discouraged to the extent that we are fully depressed we are already knocked off nothing interests us anymore but you just discover that you be seated in the presence of God and the word of God will come and that word of God rekindle hope in you and the moment the hope is rekindled the pressure flies away because the pressure is a state of absolute hopelessness you are depressed because you are not seeing any green light you are not seeing any solution you are dejected. Nothing is motivating you. But because the word of God is life, the word of God is there is power in his word. He can just hit you, bam. And before you know it, you ask yourself, what am I thinking the way I'm thinking? How do people get to the level of committing suicide? Depression. Because nothing, nothing is encouraging them anymore. They've come to their zero level and they felt there is no more lifting. But when you come to his presence, just say what? A war can resolve conflict of many months, many days, many, many years. The world heals 
the war is a food that we need to eat. He said, I find thy word and I shoot it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In our test of tonight, the Bible says, and all the people, Nehemiah chapter verse 1, and all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate and they speak unto Ezra the cry to bring the book of the Lord of Moses which the Lord had commanded to Israel. When that book was brought, they reminded themselves, don't forget these were people that had been in captivity in Babylon. These were people that had been in captivity in Persia. And now they have returned back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. So there is need to rekindle their hope. There is need to remind them of promises of God concerning them. Of things God has spoken. In respect of what has happened to them. As a matter of fact, even what happened to them was also the word of God. Because the Bible says if they disobey, he's going to scatter them abroad. He will allow people to call them captive. But if they can repent and return back to him, he also promised restoration. And it was in the process of the restoration that Nehemiah repealed the broken walls. Amen, somebody. So whenever we come together and we gather, we dip into the word of God to learn, to acquaint ourselves with things God has spoken concerning our lives, concerning the world we live in, concerning his kingdom, concerning eternal life. Praise the Lord. Hebrew 10 25 said, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhort, or do what? Exhort one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Praise the Lord. Why do we need to gather? To learn and to study is to increase our faith through the word. Brethren, that's another assignment of the word of God. The word of God builds and elevates our faith. That's why Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith, coming by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comment by hearing and hearing the word of God. At times you just hear just a word. Just a word. And you act upon it. And you get amazing results. That's why your quiet time is very key. Many a time I get revelation from the word of God through my quiet time when I'm meditating on the scripture. You can just be meditating on a verse of the scripture or just a phrase and you'll be amazed the rhema that you connect through that word. Many a times, I don't know what I happened to so many of us, when I sit under ministration and teachings of a spirit-filled man of God, while the fellow is ministering, God is giving me another message through what he's teaching. I'm not, do I have a witness in the house? God is ministering something to you. That's why many times I've had to prepare messages, sermons, while also listening to a preacher. Praise the Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And the most important thing is that you can grow. You can do what? 
brethren, a child of God that is not learning, that is not ready and willing to learn at his feet, may not grow and may not be also impact others because you cannot give what you don't have. You cannot do what? And don't forget the reason why you are a believer is so that you can also make others to do what? To believe. That's why in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 the Bible says study to show thyself approve. Unto who? Unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed. Rightly divided the word of truth. That's why we must not forsake the assembly of God's people. That's why God's people must gather. If you hear anybody telling you what, why are you going to church? After all, you can go on Facebook. After all, you can do this. After all, no, sir. The experience is not the same. Number two, why God's people gather? They gather for renewal and revival. We come through prayers. Through what? Prayers. Number two, prayers. Proverbs 15, 8. He said, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is what? His delight. Anytime we gather to pray, God delights in our prayers. God delights in what? In our prayers. God delights in our prayers. I said you are praying as a sinner. But if not, God delights in our prayers. Praise the Lord. And if you read Isaiah 56 verse 7, he said, even them will I bring to my holy mountain. Where are you tonight? Eh? And make them joyful in my house of prayers. That's why Jesus told us that we're selling and buying. Say, is it not reaching? That what? My house. Shall we call what? House of prayers. Because whenever you gather in the house of God, you are gathering in the company of innumerable number of angels. Innumerable number of what? Ascending and descending. Taking up your petition and bringing down your blessings. Praise the Lord. Say, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar for my house. Hello? For what? For my house shall be called an house of prayer. For who? All people. That's why we gather together. We renew and revive ourselves by prayers. And that's why I'm praying for somebody none of your prayer will go into voicemail. And your prayers will not go unanswered. Whenever we gather, number three, for confessions. For what? For confessions. When we gather, we confess our sins before the Almighty God. Before who? The Almighty God. So that we may obtain mercy. So that we may obtain forgiveness. You, somebody want to say, ah, should I come to church before I can do confession? I can do confession in my house now. Even have to, you can pray anywhere. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. James 5.16. James 5.16. Confess your faults. How? One to another. And pray one for so when you are in your house who do you now confess your fault amen somebody when you are in your house who pray for you you pray for yourself many a time when we say hold your partner and pray sir 
you never can tell. The prayer of that your neighbor may be the one God will hear because it's interceding for you. And the scripture, he said, and pray. How? Can you hold the hand of the fellow beside you? Hold the hand of the fellow beside you and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless this your child. Father, in the... <laughs> I'm looking at one of my daughter praying for his uh, brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say, Father, bless this your child like you bless me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if you are at home, who will I pray for you now? Eh? Huh? your son, your daughter. And pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Does what? Availeth much. Daniel 9 4 say, and I pray unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandment. Romans 10, 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto what? Salvation. Number four, when we gather for a broken and a contrite heart, brethren, it is only the word of God that can break any man. And God cherish a broken heart and a contrite spirit. It is the opposite of pride. It is what? Opposite of pride. When you have a broken spirit, when you have a contrite heart, you are acceptable before God. You are what? Before God. Psalm 34 verse 8. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and say such as be of what? A contrite spirit. Not a heart that is lifted against God. Not a heart that is lifted above God. Psalm 51 verse 17 says, The sacrifice of God are what? A broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou will not do what? Despise. You will not despise it. Praise the Lord. Number five, when we gather for renewal, Turning from sinful ways. Turning from what? Turning from what? Sinful ways. Many a time when we come together, we see ourselves in the mirror image of the world. When you stand before the mirror, physically, you will see your unadjusted color. Maybe your color is like this. Praise God. And now you now stand before the mirror. You now discover that, oh, this color ought not to be standing like this. What do you do? You adjust it. Because you are seeing yourself where? In the mirror. In the mirror, while you are looking at yourself, maybe there are some particles in your hair. What do you do? You remove them. Or while you are standing before the mirror, you observe that your hair is not well combed. What do you do? You comb it. While you are standing in the mirror, on the, looking at yourself in the mirror, maybe you are wearing a tie and you discover that your tie is shifted one side. You do what? You, you. When mirror help you to shape yourself. How? Presentably. When you look at yourself in the mirror, all you are doing is to adjust yourself to be what? 
presentable. The same thing, the word of God is like a mirror. When you are hearing the word of God, the word of God brings to the fore your, 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 your nature, your picture, who you are, how you are standing. And that's why many times when you come and the, the preacher is preaching, I think you even be compelled or forced to want to believe that the preacher is actually talking to you. Or perhaps you'll be feeling maybe somebody have gone to uh, report like it happened to a couple. The couple came to church, the husband and the wife, and the preacher was just preaching, you know, he doesn't know anything about the couple. After they got to, there was war. The man began to quarrel the wife. He said, Yeah, you, when you say you are going to church, it is my matter. I go to discuss with your pastor. Eh? You went and discussed my matter with your pastor. How did the pastor know everything happening in this house? Praise the Lord. Whereas, pastor was not aware, does not know anything specific, specifically about them. The man was just doing what? Well ministering the word but the man was as standing before what the mirror of the word of God and the word of God was pointing all the things that are not presentable in the life of the man and that will happen whenever we gather when the word of God is coming the word of God is removing every stain every particle and that's how we get sanctified I've shared that with you here before, several. For somebody that wants to be a true child of God, when you find yourself in the mirror of the word of God, rather than you uh, exonerating yourself or criticizing the preacher or getting angry, because there are different attitudes when the word of God come. But the right attitude to the word of God is for you to adjust your life. It's for you to adjust yourself. It's for you to conform to the word by the renewing of your mind. Rather than coming, hearing the word and returning and continuing in your way of life. And that's why there's difference between a born again child of God that I call a believing believer an unbelieving believer. Praise the Lord. He says they're not contradictory. It's not. Some say they are believer and they don't even have single feet. So where does the belief come? Praise the Lord. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people which are what? Shall I do what? And pray and seek my faith and turn from their what? Haven't seen their fault. Say, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. But when you justify your action, when you justify your way of life, you are not able to come to repentance. And Proverbs 28 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not do what? But so confess it and forsake it shall obtain mercy. And finally, a renewal and commitment to walk in God's will. That's why you discover that anytime a sermon is preached, an altar call is made. The altar call is to get commitment on the one yet to be saved. The other call is to get commitment of rededication from the one that has backslided. Praise the Lord. Because if you don't give that commitment, there is high tendency that by the time you go back, you continue. You continue. But that's not God's desire. That's not God's expectation. God's expectation is that when you are confronted with the truth and you know you are guilty, you know you are at fault, you know you have deviated, what do you do? 
you humble yourself before God. You do what? And then give commitment. Lord, I will not do it again. Lord, I will not do it. I will never forget the message of one of my senior pastors. The day he said it, I said, that is commitment. There was a besetting sin in his life that he had been struggling with. And he sat under administration and he gave a very dangerous commitment. A very what? Do you know how dangerous that commitment was? He said to God, Lord, when next I commit this act, kill me. Hello? He said he told God, Lord, if I should do it again, kill me. That was a commitment. And so, that was how he got his freedom. Because whenever the devil wants to push him into it, he remember his commitment. Because he doesn't want to die. Because he doesn't do what? He doesn't want to die. Because he has told God, if I should do it, do what? Kill me. How many of us can pray that prayer? That God should kill you. Praise the Lord. You are looking at me. Roma 12 12. Sorry, Roma 12 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Second Corinthians 4 16. For which cause we faith not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed how? Day by day. And of course, Hosea chapter 6 verse 1, and, verse 1 to 3 say come and let us return unto the Lord for he had turned and he will heal us he has smitten and he will bind us up after two days will he revive us in the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord his going forth is prepared at the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. The long and short, as I conclude, of all we are saying is that when God's people gathered, you gather for your spiritual checkup to ascertain your spiritual fitness if you are sincere. Because after you must have heard, after you must have prayed, the most important thing is your life, your spiritual life. That's why the question you ask yourself when you gathered in his presence and you hear his word and you learn at his feet, you ask questions such as, what am I to correct in my life? What am I doing that I must stop? What I, am I supposed to be doing that I'm not doing? These are questions that should agitate our mind so that we can be spiritually fit for Him. So that whenever he comes, we can be fit to reign with him. Conclusion. Your spiritual fitness can only be measured by the extent to which your spirit man is renewed on a daily basis. Are you renewed and revived? Is the question. Are you renewed and revived it's a question that we must answer 
So when we gather, we gather to renew our mind. And when our mind is renewed, we are revived. I pray for you. May you forever remain revived. Spiritually, you will not die. That's why when you see people that things of God does no longer interest them, they are now indifferent. They are now becoming complacent. They are now becoming lukewarm. You don't need a soothsayer to let you know that the spiritual fire is gradually going down if it is not already extinguished. My prayer is that our prayer life and our spiritual life will not be extinguished. Any question or questions as we rise up to pray? Yeah. Any question? No questions. Well understood. Correct? Shall we rise? I want you to just wave your hand to heaven and just appreciate the almighty God for the word he has sent to us tonight. Say, Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking expressly to me. Go ahead. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Just one prayer point I want you to pray for yourself as you lift up your two hands to heaven and say, Father, say, Father, please renew my mind and revive me. Let me be spiritually fit for you at all time. Can you go ahead and talk to the Almighty God? Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. 